a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Rebel commanders were planning their next move against the evil Galactic Empire. For the first time, all warships in the Rebel fleet were being brought together to form a single great armada. Little did they know, however, that the rebellion was doomed, for the Emperor had ordered the construction of a new armored space station, more powerful than the first Death Star. Amid the frantic construction operations, an Imperial shuttle arrived at the massive docking bay aboard the half-completed battle station. Death Star Commander Moff Jerjerid and his troops snapped to attention as a black masked figure strode menacingly down the shuttle ramp. Lord Vader, this is an unexpected pleasure. We're honored by your presence. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. I assure you, Lord Vader, my men are working as fast as they can. Perhaps I can find new ways to motivate them. I tell you, this station will be operational as planned. The Emperor does not share your optimistic appraisal of the situation. But he asks the impossible. I need more men. Then perhaps you can tell him when he arrives. The Emperor's coming here? That is correct, Commander. And he is most displeased with your apparent lack of progress. We shall double our efforts. I hope so, Commander, for your sake. The Emperor is not as forgiving as I am. Meanwhile, Commander Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and Lando Calrissian had made their way to the desert planet of Tatooine in an attempt to rescue their friend Han Solo from the clutches of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. Luke's rescue plans were already underway as the golden droid C-3PO and his squat companion R2-D2 approached Jabba's ominous palace along a sand-swept road. Of course I'm worried, and you should be too. Lando Calrissian and poor Chewbacca never returned from that awful place. If I told you half the things I've heard about this Jabba the Hutt, you'd probably short-circuit. When the two droids reached the palace, a huge iron door clanked open. They entered the gloomy interior, where they were confronted by pig-like Gamorrean guards and by Jabba's satanic-looking assistant, Bib Fortuna. Help, Jabba! Artu, I have a bad feeling about this. Before long, they found themselves in Jabba's throne room, a dank chamber filled with a bizarre collection of alien beasts, bounty hunters, and revelers. But among these dregs of the galactic underworld, the most grotesque was their leader, Jabba the Hutt, a repulsive blob of bloated flesh who reclined on his immense throne like a gigantic slug. The revolting gangster greeted the droids in Hutties. Oh, Message, Artu, the message. Artu beamed a holographic image of a black-robed figure before Jabba. Greetings, exalted one. I am Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight and friend to Captain Solo. I seek an audience with your greatness to bargain for Solo's life. <laughs> with your wisdom, I'm sure that we can work out an arrangement which will be mutually beneficial and enable us to avoid any unpleasant confrontation. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift. These two droids. What did he say? Both are hardworking and will serve you well. This can't be. R2, you're playing the wrong message. We're doomed. Jabba was not about to give up his favorite decoration. He gestured proudly to a metallic slab at the far end of the room. R2, look. Captain Solo, and he's still frozen in carbonite. <laughs> Thus it was that R2-D2 became a service droid on Jabba's sail barge, while C-3PO was employed as Jabba's personal translator. The golden droid was soon put to work when a helmeted bounty hunter named Boosh entered the throne room, leading a shaggy eight-foot Wookiee in chains. Oh. Oh. No, Chewbacca. Kanji, droid. Yes, I am here, your worshipfulness. Uh, yes? Yubako, Rado Kamawalpa. 
Bayez Kachong Kawawoki. The illustrious Java bids you welcome and will gladly pay you the reward of 25,000. You know. You know. 50,000, no less. Ah, Union Hosa, 50,000? The, the mighty Java asks why he must pay 50,000. Hey, you know. Because he's holding a thermal detonator. <laughs> <laughs> Jabba offers a sum of 35, and I do suggest you take it. He agrees! The bargain concluded. Boosh joined the revelry as Chewbacca was dragged to a dungeon cell below. Later that evening, Bush maneuvered his way stealthily through the room full of snoring drunken creatures toward the alcove holding Jabba's carbonite prize. The bounty hunter activated a series of switches. The carbonite block began to melt, revealing the dazed figure of Han Solo. <laughs> Just relax a moment. You're free of the carbonite. You have hibernation sickness. I can't see. Your eyesight will return in time. Where am I? Jabba's palace. <laughs> who are you? Someone who loves you. Well, I gotta get you out of here. <sighs> What's that? <laughs> I know that laugh. <laughs> You need solo. Hey, Jabba, I was just on my way to pay you back, and I got a little sidetracked. It's not my fault. We now come back, Vapodo. Look, Jabba, I'll pay you trip. You're throwing away a fortune here. Don't be a fool. We have powerful friends. You're going to regret this. But Jabba did not seem concerned. Instead, he amused himself by making Leia his personal slave girl, chaining her to the foot of his throne. Han was dragged to a dank cell, where the blind pilot discovered that he was not alone. Chewie? Chewie, is that you? <laughs> Chewie! I can't see, pal. What's going on? Luke, Luke's crazy. He can't even take care of himself, much less rescue anybody. A, a Jedi Knight. <laughs> I'm out of it. For a little while, everybody gets delusions of grandeur. At that moment, a lone, unarmed figure clothed in a dark hooded robe entered Jabba's throne room. Tavanopes Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. At last, Master Luke's come to rescue me. Oy, oy. I must be allowed to speak. You will bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. <laughs> I'm taking Captain Solo and his friends. You can either profit by this or be destroyed. It's your choice, but I warn you not to underestimate my powers. Master Luke, you're standing on... Ja! No! The grating beneath Luke's feet dropped away and he tumbled into a deep cavern. Jabba's minions watched with glee as a large metal door was raised near Luke. Through it lumbered a huge, slavering monster. Come near with the rancor! Time and time again, Luke skillfully eluded the ponderous beast. But the creature finally trapped the young Jedi in a small alcove of the dark cavern. Luke looked around and picked up the skull of an earlier victim and took careful aim at a distant control panel. A large metal retaining door dropped heavily and crushed the beast to death. Jabba was furious. Luke, Han, and Chewie were taken before him. Han! Luke! Are you all right? Fine. Together again, huh? Wouldn't miss it. How are we doing? Same as always. That bad, huh? Where's Leia? I'm here. Duck, droid, uni kong. Oh dear. His high exaltedness, the great Never the Hutt, has decreed that you are to be terminated immediately. Good, I hate long waits. 
you will therefore be taken to the Dune Sea and cast into the pit of Carcoon, the nesting place of the all-powerful Sarlacc. Doesn't sound so bad. In his belly you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you are slowly digested over a thousand years. Second thought, let's pass on that, huh? You should have bargained, Jabba. <laughs> it's the last mistake you'll ever make. Yeah, Tony, too. Anxious to witness the execution, Jabba loaded his cronies into his floating sail barge and headed out to the pit of Carcoon. From the deck of the spacious barge, Leia, R2, and 3PO watched an air skiff carrying their friends arrive and hover over the mouth of the Sarlacc. Just stick close to Chewie and Lando. They're taking care of everything. Oh, great. Victims of the almighty Sarlacc, His Excellency hopes that you will die honorably. Jabba, this is your last chance. Free us or die. Um. Luke was shoved to the end of a gangplank. The young Jedi glanced over to R2 aboard the sail barge and saluted. The tiny droid fired a lightsaber into Luke's waiting hand. Luke slashed at the skiff guards. Lando threw off his guard disguise and helped free Han and Chewbacca. The astonished onlookers jumped into action. They fired the large sail barge guns at Luke's skiff, toppling it sideways. Lando was thrown overboard and began sliding down the sand toward the Sarlacc's mouth. The desert monster wrapped a horrible tentacle around Lando's leg. As Chewie clutched his feet, Han dangled from the skiff in an attempt to reach his friend. Chewie, give me the gun! Uh -huh. Don't move, Lando! No, wait, I thought you were blind! It's all right, I can see a lot better. Don't move! Chewie, pull up. Come on. Uh, all right, up, Chewie. Uh, uh. Meanwhile, Luke had leaped onto the sail barge, striking down Jabba's soldiers. During the diversion, Princess Leia threw her slave chain around Jabba's neck and strangled the foul creature. Then she raced to Luke's side. Come on, we gotta get out of here quick. Quickly, R2! Get the gun! Point at the deck! Leia aimed a barge cannon downward as Luke kicked the trigger. The gun's energy bolt blasted a gaping hole through the barge as Luke and Leia swung by rope onto the waiting skiff. Let's go, and don't forget the droids. We're on our way. Lando steered the skiff swiftly over the sand dunes as Jabba's pleasure barge exploded in flames. Soon, Luke was aboard his X-Wing as the others departed Tatooine in the Millennium Falcon. I'll meet you back at the fleet. Hurry. The Alliance should be assembled by now. I will. Hey, Luke, thanks. Thanks for coming after me. Now I owe you one. <laughs> That's right, R2. We're going to the Dagobah system. I have a promise to keep. To an old friend. That face you make. Look how so old to your eyes. No. Of course not. <clears throat> I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Sick have I become. Mm. I heard in a week. Mm. With 900 years old, you age look as good you were not. Hmm? <laughs> Soon will I rest? Yes. Forever sleep. Whom did I have? <sighs> Master Yoda, you can't die. Strong am I with the Force, but not that strong. Twilight is upon me, and soon night must fall. That is the way of things, the way of the Force. But I need your help. I've come back to complete the training. No more training do you require. Already know you, that which you need. Then I am a Jedi. And yet, one thing remains. Vader, you must confront Vader. Then, only then, a Jedi will you be. And confront him you will. Master Yoda, is Darth Vader my father? Your father he is. Told you, did he? Yes. Unexpected this is, and unfortunate. Unfortunate that you rushed to face him. 
that incomplete was your training, that not ready for the burden for you. I'm sorry. Remember, a Jedi strength flows from the Force. But beware, anger, fear, oppression, the dark side of me. Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. No, do not underestimate the powers of the Emperor. Or suffer your father's fate. You will. Yeah. When gone am I? The last of the Jedi will you be. The Force will fall in your family. Pass on what you have learned. Look. Is the mad thing gone? The tiny Jedi Master quietly faded from sight. Luke was dazed. He wandered outside. We can't go on alone. Yoda will always be with you. Obi-Wan, why didn't you tell me? You told me Vader betrayed and murdered my father. Your father was seduced by the dark side of the Force. He ceased to be Anakin Skywalker and became Darth Vader. When that happened, the good man who was your father was destroyed. So what I told you was true. Anakin was a good friend. When I first knew him, your father was already a great pilot, but I was amazed how strongly the Force was with him. I took it upon myself to train him as a Jedi. I thought that I could instruct him just as well as Yoda. I was wrong. There is still good in him. He's more machine now than man, twisted and evil. I can't do it, Ben. I can't kill my own father. Then the Emperor has already won. You were our only hope. Yoda spoke of another. The other he spoke of is your twin sister. But I have no sister. Hmm. To protect you both from the Emperor, you were hidden from your father when you were born. The Emperor knew, as I did, if Anakin were to have any offspring, they would be a threat to him. That is the reason why your sister remains safely anonymous. Leia. Leia is my sister. Your insight serves you well. Bury your feelings deep down, Luke. They do you credit but they could be made to serve the Emperor. Meanwhile, aboard the Death Star, hundreds of Imperial troops snapped to attention as the Emperor's shuttle ramp was lowered. Darth Vader knelt before his master, a gnarled and ancient figure wrapped in a hooded cloak. Rise, my friend. The Death Star will be completed on schedule. You've done well, Lord Vader. And now I sense you wish to continue your search for young Skywalker. Yes, my master. Patience, my friend. In time, he will seek you out. And when he does, you must bring him before me. He has grown strong. Only together can we turn him to the dark side of the Force. As you wish. Aboard the Rebel Headquarters frigate, Alliance leader Mon Mothma addressed the anxious Rebel troops. The Emperor's made a critical error and the time for our attack has come. The data brought to us by the Bothan spies pinpoints the exact location of the Emperor's new battle station. We've learned that the Emperor himself is personally overseeing the final stages of the construction of this Death Star. Admiral Akbar, please. Although the weapon systems on this Death Star are not yet operational, the Death Star does have a strong defense mechanism. It is protected by an energy shield, which is generated from the nearby forest moon of Endor. The shield must be deactivated if any attack is to be attempted. Once the shield is down, our cruisers will create a perimeter while the fighters fly into the superstructure and attempt to knock out the main reactor. 
General Carrigian has volunteered to lead the fighter attack. Good luck. You're gonna need it. General Nadine. We have stolen a small Imperial shuttle. Disguised as a cargo ship and using a secret Imperial code, a strike team will land on the moon and deactivate the shield generator. General Solo, is your strike team assembled? Uh, my team's ready. I don't have a command crew for the shuttle. Well, it's gonna be rough, Fal. I didn't want to speak for you. That's one. General, count me in. I'm with you, too. Luke. Hi, Han. Hi. Chewie. Exciting is hardly the word I would choose. <laughs> Got her warmed? Yeah, she's coming up. Yeah, well, I don't think the Empire had Wookiees in mind when they designed her, Chewie. Han stared out the windshield of the stolen Imperial shuttle toward his beloved Millennium Falcon. Hey, you awake? Yeah, I just got a funny feeling, like I'm not going to see her again. Come on, General. Let's move. Right. Chewie, let's see what this piece of junk can do. Ready, everybody? All set. Here we go again. What is thy bidding, my master? Send the fleet to the far side of Endor. There it will stay until called for. What are the reports of the rebel fleet massing near Sullust? It is of no concern. Soon the rebellion will be crushed and young Skywalker will be one of us. Your work here is finished, my friend. Go out to the command ship and await my orders. Yes, my master. Jumping through hyperspace, Han found himself approaching Vader's command ship and the half-completed Death Star. If they don't go for this, we're going to have to get out of here pretty quick, Chewie. Shuttle Tidarium, transmit the clearance code for shield passage. That's mission commencing. Now we find out if that code is worth the price we paid. It'll work. It'll work. Vader's on that ship. Now don't get jittery, Luke. I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't have come. Where is that shuttle going? Shall I hold them? No. Leave them to me. I will deal with them myself. As you wish, my lord. Carry on. Shuttle Tidarium. Deactivation of the shield will commence immediately. Follow your present course. Okay. I told you it was going to work. Han proceeded to Endor, a nearby moon covered with thick foliage and huge trees. Landing near the Imperial base, he and his troops began their secretive march toward the shield generator bunker. They had not gone far when they were spotted by two Imperial scouts. Go for help! Go! Han knocked out the first scout as the second leaped onto his speeder bike and roared off into the woods. Chewie quickly aimed his crossbow. Over there! Two more of them! I see them! Wait, Leia! Leia grabbed the remaining speeder bike and zoomed off just as Luke jumped onto the back seat. Leia skillfully steered after the two escaping scouts. Move closer! Get alongside that one! Luke leaped onto the nearest bike, knocking its rider to the ground. Just then, two more Imperial speeder bikes joined the chase. Keep on that one! I'll take these two! Luke quickly braked and let his two pursuers rush past him. He blasted one to the ground and raced after the other. They weaved among the trees at breakneck speed. Their bikes tangled. Luke detached his bike and leaped to safety just before it collided with a tree. The Imperial Speeder Scout doubled back, firing laser bolts. Luke lit his lightsaber and deflected the shots. As the speeder tore past him, Luke slashed off a stabilizer fan. The bike spun out of control and smashed into a giant tree. Far ahead, Leia was knocked from her bike just as her prey met with a large tree stump. Uh, General, sir, somebody's coming. Luke! Where's Leia? We got separated. Hey, we better go look for her. Take the squad ahead. We'll meet at the shield generator at 0300. Come on, R2. We'll need your scanners. Don't worry, Master Luke. We know what to do. Deep in the Endor forest, a small, bear-like creature approached the unconscious body of the princess. Cautiously, 
he prodded her with the point of his crude spear. Cut it out! Not today. I'm not gonna hurt you. Well, looks like I'm stuck here. Trouble is, I don't know where here is. Maybe you can help me. Come on, sit down. I promise I won't hurt you. Now come here. All right. You want something to eat? Come on. Hmm? That's right. You're a jittery little thing, aren't you? What is it? Freeze! Come on, get up. Go get your ride and take her back to base. Yes, sir. What the? Oh! Leia knocked out the distracted guard with a tree limb. Then she shot the remaining scout as he sped off on his bike. Come on. Let's get out of here. I told you to remain on the command ship. A small rebel force has penetrated the shield and landed on Endor. My son is with them. Are you sure? I have felt him, my master. Then you must go to the Centauri moon and wait for him. His compassion for you will be his undoing. He will come to you, and then you will bring him before me. As you wish. There's two more Rex speeders back there. Oh, Master Luke, I'm afraid that our two senses can find no trace of Princess Leia. I hope she's all right. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a host of Ewoks, small furry warriors waving crude spears. Hey, point that thing someplace else. All right, don't. It'll be all right. Chewie, give me your crossbow. My goodness. Treat him, Dogra. He saw you to Amuna Noka. What are you telling them? Hello, I think. I could be mistaken. They're using a very primitive dialect, but I do believe they think I am some sort of god. Well, why don't you use your divine influence and get us out of this? I beg your pardon, General Solo, but it's against my programming to impersonate a deity. Freepio! But as Han lunged at sea Freepio, the Ewoks arose to protect their golden god. They bound the rebels and hauled them off to the Ewok village high in the treetops. Yet Tripio was carried like a king on a makeshift throne by the admiring teddy bear-like warriors. Once at the primitive village, Han was suspended over a fire pit. I have a really bad feeling about this. What did he say? I'm rather embarrassed, General Sono, but it appears you are to be the main course at a banquet in my honor. Oh, Leia. Leia. Your Royal Highness. But these are my friends. Repio, tell them they must be set free. Repio, tell them if they don't do as you wish, you'll become angry and use your magic. Anyway, which was to the art? You wait a soldier. Boom! Using the force, Luke levitated 3PO over the heads of the superstitious Ewoks. What, 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 what's happening? Oh, oh dear, oh, put me down! The frightened Ewoks quickly untied Han, Luke, and Chewbacca as 3PO slowly descended. Oh, I never knew I had it in me. That night, 3PO delighted the Ewok tribe by describing the heroics of the rebels and the terrors of the Empire. And before long, the Ewoks swore to help the rebels in any way they could. But Luke had other things on his mind. He wandered away from the chief's hut. Leia, sensing his anguish, followed him into the night air. Luke, tell me, what's troubling you? Vader is here. Now, on this moon, he's come for me. He can feel when I'm near. That's why I have to go. As long as I stay, I'm endangering the group and our mission here. I have to face him. Why? He's my father. Your father? There's more. 
It won't be easy for you to hear it, but you must. If I don't make it back, you're the only hope for the Alliance. Luke, don't talk that way. You have a power I, I don't understand and could never have. You're wrong, Leia. You have that power, too. In time, you'll learn to use it as I have. Force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. Yes. It's you, Leia. I know. Somehow, I've always known. Then you know why I have to face him. There is good in him. I felt it. I can save him. I can turn him back to the good side. I have to try. Luke turned sadly and left. That night, Vader took a shuttle to the Imperial base on the moon of Endor. An Imperial walker lumbered up to a docking platform and unloaded its special cargo. This is the rebel that surrendered to us. Although he denies it, I believe there may be more of them. He was armed only with this. Good work, Commander. Leave us. Yes, my lord. The Emperor has been expecting you. I know, Father. So, you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. Come with me. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. You don't know the power of the dark side. I must obey my master. I will not turn, and you'll be forced to kill me. If that is your destiny. Search your feelings, father. You can't do this. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. It is too late for me, son. The Emperor will show you the true nature of the Force. He is your master now. Then my father is truly dead. Vader's shuttle lifted off with Luke aboard for its journey to the Death Star. Meanwhile, the rebels began moving against the Empire. On Endor, the Ewoks guided Han and his strike force to a secret back entrance to the shield generator bunker. And in another part of the galaxy, Lando led the rebel fleet into hyperspace for its imminent attack on the Death Star, where at that same moment, Vader had brought his son before the Emperor. Welcome, young Skywalker. I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me Master. You're gravely mistaken. You won't convert me as you did my father. By now you must know your father can never be turned from the dark side. So will it be with you. You're wrong. Soon I'll be dead, and you with me. <laughs> Perhaps you'll refer to the imminent attack on your rebel fleet. Your friends up there on the sanctuary moon are walking into a trap, as is your rebel fleet. It was I who allowed the Alliance to know the location of the shield generator. It is quite safe from your pitiful little band. An entire legion of my best troops awaits them. <laughs> Using the bunker's back entrance, the rebel task force stormed into the control room carrying explosives. Up! Oh, come on! Quickly, quickly! Chewie! Charges! Come on! Han, hurry. The fleet will be here any moment. Throw me another charge. Come on! But as the Emperor had planned, dozens of stormtroopers rushed into the bunker, surprising the rebels. Great! You rebel scum. At that moment, the rebel fleet came out of hyperspace to face the uncompleted Death Star. We've got to be able to get some kind of reading on that shield up or down. Well, how could they be jamming us if they don't know if we're coming? Break off the attack! The shield is still up! All craft, pull up! Take a base of action! Admiral, we have enemy ships in Sector 47! It's a trap! Fighters coming in! Accelerate to attack speed! Draw their fire away from the cruiser! Copy, gold leader. Come, boy. See for yourself. From here, you will witness the final destruction of the Alliance 
and the end of your insignificant rebellion. The heat is swelling in you now. Take your Jedi weapon. Strike me down with it. Give in to your anger. With each passing moment, you make yourself more my servant. No. It is your destiny. You, like your father, are now mine. At the generator bunker, Han and the others were led outside at gunpoint. All right, move it! Suddenly, the Ewok warriors attacked the stormtroopers. From undergrowth and from treetop, tiny arrows, spears and clubs pelted the Imperial forces. Even the Imperial walkers were not immune to the furry assault. Rocks were dropped from crude hang gliders and logs tumbled from hilltops. From the Emperor's throne room, Luke could see the rebel fleet caught between the Star Destroyers and the Death Star. As you can see, my young apprentice, your friends have faith. Now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. Fire at will, Commander. Fire. A blast came from the Death Star. That thing's operational. We got it. All can prepare a retreat. You won't get another chance at this, Admiral. We have no choice, General Carradine. Our cooker can't repel firepower of that magnitude. And we'll have that shield down. We've got to give him more time. Move as close as you can and engage those Star Destroyers at point-blank range. At that close range, we won't last long against those Star Destroyers. We'll last longer than we will against that Death Star. And we might just take a few of them with us. Your fleet is lost. And your friends on the Endor Moon will not survive. The Alliance will die. Good. I can feel your anger. I am defenseless. Take your weapon. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Luke could stand no more. His lightsaber flew into his hand, and he swung it at the evil ruler. But Vader's weapon parried the blow. <laughs> Good. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the heat flow through you. Obi-Wan has taught you well. I will not fight you. You are unwise to lower your defenses. You thought to betray you, Father. I feel the good in you. The conflict. There is no conflict. You couldn't bring yourself to kill me before, and I don't believe you'll destroy me now. You underestimate the power of the dark side. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. Watch out, Squad Point oh six. I'm on it, Gold Leader. Good shot, Red Two. Sure, in the middle of it now. Come on, hand, old buddy, don't let me down. Give yourself to the dark side. It is the only way you can save your friends. Yes, your thoughts betray you. Your feelings for them are strong, especially for sister. So, you have a twin sister. Your feelings have now betrayed her too. Obi-Wan was wise to hide her from me. Now his failure is complete. If you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. In a blind fury, Luke slashed at Vader, driving him to his knees. With a final blow, he severed the Dark Lord's hand, exposing a wrist of wires and electronics. Good. Your 
hate has made you powerful. Now, fulfill your destiny and take your father's place at my side. Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. Deadly energy bolts shot from the Emperor's hands, hammering Luke to the floor. Meanwhile, on Endor, the battle raged on. Unable to break into the bunker by force, Han tried a new trick using the bunker's video screen. It's over, Commander. The rebels have been routed. They're fleeing into the woods. We need reinforcements to continue the pursuit. Send three squads to help. Open the back door. At that, the rebels rushed inside, recapturing the bunker. They quickly set their explosive charges and ran outside for cover. Come back to attack on the Death Star's red reactor. We're on our way. Red group, gold group, all fighters follow me. <laughs> I told you they'd do it. <laughs> you are a fool. Only now, at the end, do you understand. Your feeble skills are no match for the power of the dark side. Father, please! Help me! A final barrage of deadly bolts struck the young Jedi. The sight of his son in agony suddenly reached the heart of Anakin Skywalker. The wounded Dark Lord summoned his strength and lifted the Emperor over his head. The energy bolts turned to rain down on Vader, but with a last heroic effort, he managed to throw the Emperor into a deep chasm. The Millennium Falcon and two X-Wings raced into the superstructure of the half-completed battle station. Here goes nothing. Now log on to the strongest power source. It should be the power generator. Amid the confusion on the Death Star, Luke dragged the battered body of his father to a shuttle in the docking bay. Luke, help me take this mask off. But you die. Nothing can stop that now. Just for once, let me look on you with my own eyes. Now, go, my son. Leave me. No, you're coming with me. I can't leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have Luke. You were right about me. Get your sister. You were right. Father, I won't leave you. Through the narrow corridors of pipes and girders, Lando and Wedge finally reach the core of the Death Star. There it is. All right, Wedge, go for the power regulator on the North Tower. Coming, old leader. I'm already on my way out. The blast started a chain reaction of internal explosions. Lando and Wedge raced ahead of the fireballs and finally shot out into the safety of space. <laughs> The destruction of the Death Star flashed like a blazing sun above the victorious rebel troops on Endor. They did it! I'm sure Luke wasn't on that thing when it blew. He wasn't. But I can feel it. You love him, don't you? Yes. All right. I understand. When he comes back, I won't get in the way. <sighs> it's not like that at all. My brother. <laughs>
Luke had indeed escaped the destruction of the Death Star to land safely on the moon of Endor. That night, he solemnly placed the body of Vader on a funeral pyre and set it ablaze. Luke watched sadly as the flames consumed his fallen father. Then he joined the noisy celebration in the Ewok village. Bonfires burned, songs were sung, and fireworks lit the sky. The victorious rebels congratulated each other, joyous in the knowledge that their fight was over at last and that news of their hard-won freedom would soon reach across the galaxy. Luke, Leia, Han, and Lando hugged each other happily as the Ewoks danced around the victory fires. Then Luke caught sight of three familiar figures, the spectral images of Yoda, Obi-Wan, and his father, Anakin Skywalker, smiled proudly at the young Jedi. Leia approached and took Luke by the arm. Smiling, she drew him back to the celebration and to his friends and to their circle of love.